inside the facility. There's rows and rows of trucks here. If that's where they brought the nukes, then the truck we're after should be there. Okay, so Snake, welcome back to Let's Play one of the Metal Gear the Solid nukes? Peace Walker. One yes, must have I'm redoing this mission. As the one from the and yes, I'm heeding your comments. Apparently, what I did wrong last time... Well, I didn't do wrong so much as I... I picked the right one first, but it wasn't a bad thing if I actually searched all the trucks. So, let's see if it if it really doesn't matter. So, I'm going to pick all of them. We're going to start with this one. Hey, look, Not fish. I like fish. Look kind of like some tuna fish. All right. What do we got in 48273? Whoa. Metal gear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Metal Gear, funny. Pretty four, pretty sure six four seven seven nine was the one that was correct. So let's try this one. What, Mr. Kojima? What the? Really? Kojima? Okay. How the fuck did Kojima get in a Metal Gear game? I mean, I know he makes them, but come on now. What the? What the? F what it? What was that all about? I'm I'm guessing that was an Easter egg of some sort that I did not get. Mm. Holy crap! Where are they? Chips and monies, chips and gold. Let me get all of that. All right, let's try 140.96. Hey, I know that number. Oh, hello. Hey, Mei Ling, what up, baby? What the hell is she doing up in there? And boxes. Nothing. Well then, I see why you guys wanted me to check that shit out. That's pretty funny. Cool Easter eggs. I think that's all the trucks, right? So all we have left is the last one. Alright, well, in that case, the rest of this is probably going to go exactly the same as it went before. So I'll meet you back at the mission... Ch uh, whatever. Screen. <coughs> Alright, so we officially finished that mission again. I like that I can skip cutscenes, it's very nice. Makes things a lot nicer. I didn't get all the same, I got a worse rank in fact because I didn't do any of the cutscene stuff. I don't really care though. I was in it for the extra Fulton. The following words can now be infused with heroic spirit, taking it slow. Okay, cool. So, after I found Kojima inside that truck, did it make the Fulton recovery sound like I recovered him? Because that would be interesting. Huh. Nice little Easter eggs, though. That was cool. You'll have to tell me what that sun, the sun one was. I was a little confused by that one. Holy crap. Hideo has joined. We literally recruited Hideo Kojima. That's awesome. And we got an achievement for it. Even cooler. <laughs> New plan has been built thanks to staff efforts. Cool. Wait, what? Oh. Alright. You can go to sick pay since you're hurting. Hagfish. Cool. Mother base is a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit more awesome. All right, let's go ahead and auto assign everyone that we got. We got a shit ton of more soldiers now. I basically used all my Fulton recoveries on that mission. Surround indicator rank two, ready for development. All right, cool. Let us start developing whatever that is. New item, develop, yes, go. We got plenty of GIMP now, so we haven't been using it. I ain't haven't had nothing to, to work on for a couple missions now. Anyway, last time we uh, did that mission and got ourselves ready for the next boss, but today we're going to do another briefing file episode prefaced by that and the other side missions that we now have. I believe there are two or three now. I know there's a Fulton Recovery one that we can do. Plus the target demolition. So let's go ahead and do Fulton Recovery because usually those are pretty easy. Started. Complete the mission and proceed to the Fulton recovery point. So Will we can do, get sir. you back alive and well. Good that luck out we there. can do. We can do that. All right. Um, use Fulton to rescue the researcher. All right. Um, I'm just going to go stealth as usual, I guess. Fulton recovery mission. As you're probably aware, this is a Fulton recovery no mission. No shizzle. Be careful you don't shoot and kill any prisoners by accident. Dur. And don't forget to take the recovery kit with you. I'd suggest arming yourself with a tranquilizer gun just to be safe, so you don't kill any prisoners. Shut up, bitch. 
Don't you dare tell me. Don't talk to me like that ever again. Recovery kit, though. Maybe I'll do that. Also, which one? Wait. What was the recovery kit again? What thing is the recovery kit? I'm not even sure I know what the recovery kit is, bro. Yeah, I don't even... I don't even know what he's talking about. I might not even have such a thing as a recovery kit. You're just making words up, sir. Alright, let's just get this mission done with. Let's do it. I got my Trank guns ready. I ain't gonna kill nobody. Screw you, Kaz, for having doubts. For having doubts. In fact, I've killed very few soldiers in this whole game other than the missions where we're fighting the tanks and stuff. Your current objective is to retrieve the researchers. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Don't you fucking worry about your pretty little head. Like this fucking guy. Oh, shit, I missed. I counted for his movement, and he didn't move yet. Alright, let's get this guy out of here before his friends see him down. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Get the Fulton shit out of here. Alright, that guy's gone. I'm wondering if there's going to be more f more dudes here. Well, this is just... No, this, they're not going to have more prisoners, are they? Fulton recovered a helicopter this is just a side mission. Boink. Oh shit, another one. Boink. See ya. Oh, we already can win. I could win right now. But I might as well get all the soldiers I can, right? As for previous suggestion... In fact, I'm gonna look around for another minute and see if there's any more prisoners. Any more prisoners? Any hidden thingies? Probably something here that I'm not seeing. Also, time wasting. Time's a wasting. Time's a wasting. Screw it. Oh wait, and we usually have to get to an exit after we uh, okay. do those anyway. Yeah, we usually have to head for a goal. All right, I don't think there's anything else going on here. Let's get the hell out of here. Mission was pretty easy. I could have done it obviously super fast if I just popped a couple fools real quick, covered the dude. It could have been done in about 10 seconds. That's an easy one. A little too easy. It's all right. I'm okay with easy ones, especially if it gets us some new recruits. Oh yeah, I'll take it. Get those weapon level ups, baby. Get them weapon level ups. And A rank. Could have done it super fast if I didn't even waste the time. Alright. Okay. Alright. Don't worry, we'll get to our briefing file episode sooner. Sooner. Sooner rather than soon. Sooner. Soon. Sooner soon. Very soon. The next one's just gonna be a target practice, right? Well or not practice, but a target kill session one. Target demolition. Blow up the designated target in the enemy base. Oh. So we gotta bring some C4. Alright. Fair enough. Let's get this mission started. Complete the mission and proceed to the Fulton recovery point. So we got can it. get you back alive and well. Good luck out there. Sounds like a plan, son. Let's get them C4. Oh, the, I was already carrying the C4. What am I talking about? Um, anything new for this one? No. No. And sabotage missions. Let's see what she has to say about sabotage Sabotaging missions. Sabotaging enemy bases is another principle of guerrilla warfare. You will need explosives for that. And naturally, once they detonate, the enemy will know you're there. So you need to make sure you have enough time to get to safety before they go off. Best to plan your escape route before you go and plant the explosives. Ma'am, yes ma'am. What she said. Alright. Cool. Let's get it done then, son. All right, okay, let's blow some shit up today. All right, okay, let's blow some shit up today. The question is, where, oh, we have to blow up that yellow crate, okay. Destroy all enemy supplies with your C4. Got it. Now, are these guys easy to pop or do they got helmets on? Fucking helmeted bitches. Heh <laughs> heh. Let's get these fools done quick. Get that Fulton recovery system out. Ready to go. Check this shit. Going stealthy, but quick. Stealthy, but quick. Get that shit down, son. Get that shit down, son. Now get the hell out of here. You wise guy. Alright, 
that fucking guy right there. Is there a dude up there? No. Right, so this guy right here. This motherfucker right here. This motherfucker right here. It's done! You're done, son! Oh, 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 nope. Don't you dare. Alright, now see ya. Alright, we got one more fucker left, right? I didn't see a fourth or a fifth one. I only saw the fourth one. I should check inside of here, see if there's any prisoners Ultra hanging out. Helicopter is or any hidden items hanging out. You never know, guys. You never know. Alright. Last mofo over here. It's punking. Enemies close You didn't see me? You didn't see me? You saw nothing. Get out of here. Alright. Blow this fucker sky high. What do you say? Oops. I keep thinking that the C4 is on the item side, but it's not. Alright, plant it. And uh let's let's get a bird's eye view of it. What do you say? Yay, alright. Okay. You're done with that area. Done. For the goal. Where's the goal here? Oh psh, right there. We're good. Whee! That was an easy one. You did it. Keep it up. Wow, these are really, really condensed style missions. Holy crap. They can literally take you like fifteen seconds to complete it if you're quick. And you got skills. Like, you could do that shit so fast. It must be hard to get S rank on some of them, because I bet you the requirement is, like, to do it hell fast and get all the soldiers or something. Who knows? Who knows? Either way, finished another mission. Took less than two minutes. Aww, yeah. All right. Cool. Let's head back to the base, set up some peoples, and then it's briefing file time, guys. Briefing file time. Briefing file time. Bitches! I'm thinking today we're going to get through all the briefing files I have left over and tack on the fact that there are some new ones. I, Someone mentioned in my comments, and I already said out loud, I, I had a feeling that there would be more in the, in the briefing file section as we go, and lo and behold, there's a couple new ones there. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and auto-assign the rest of these new people. I don't know what we do about Hagfish. Do we wait? I guess we wait till he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. He's still in there. It's okay. All right. Research and development. I don't think we got any new ones. No, not any more new ones. Not yet. All right, in that case, to the briefing files. No, I didn't say X-Files. I said briefing files. No. All right. Um, I guess to get to them, we'll just go ahead and pick a random one. Go to briefing files, and here we go, guys. All right, so Miller, let's start with these, because these are probably the least interesting ones left. Go through all these gameplay ones, like co-ops. Cooperative operations, or co-ops for short, is the term for taking on missions in teams of two or more. The basic co-ops unit is a two-man cell. Even a single teammate is great to have in enemy territory. And there are actually quite a few things you can't do by yourself. You can help each other climb walls, Divide up mission roles. On the other hand, if one of you is spotted, the other one's screwed too. And it's kind of tough for two people to hide in one small space. Good point. But what's more important than anything is how close you are to your comrades. Well said. Working as a two-man cell can make the mission easier or harder, depending on how well you work together. It's also good to note that if you've got a clear, specific objective, it can be to your advantage to use an even bigger team. That said, Teams of three or more run a much greater risk of being spotted. Yeah. In a sneaking mission, the fewer people you have, the easier it is to get around. I can believe it. I can believe that. Let's learn about this co-op ring. In co-ops, you can trade weapons and equipment with your teammates. You can also display your teammates' inventories from your weapon or equipment menu. Ammo is shared too, of course. Ammo, sure. How about life? That also shared. Yep. You all sink or swim together. Your teammate dies, you die. You need to be within a certain distance of each other to swap items. Yeah, I know. I've been in this business so long I can virtually see that distance. Looks kind of like a ring in my head. That's why you're the boss. Okay, we'll call it the co-op ring. And entering the ring will be called going co-op in. Did you just come up with that yourself? You're such a genius, Kaz. I almost feel like it's pointless to listen to these co-op things since I'm not going to use them in this playthrough. But there could be some interesting conversations in here nonetheless, like snake formation. 
Another thing. During a mission, you can assume what we'll call the Snake Formation. Same as your code name, but probably not standard operating procedure for a guy who specializes in going solo. Damn right. There's only room for one snake. In co-ops, though, it's a highly effective formation. The signal for snake formation is to tap your teammate on the shoulder. Hmm. Can't form up until you're close enough to reach out and touch someone. Entering snake formation is called going snake in. When you're snake in, the soldier at the front of the line controls movement. The soldiers in back focus on scouting and attack. <laughs> so many jokes about snake in. The line I wanted to say is, man, I need something to stick my snake in. Oh, I went there. I went there. CPR. Just because your heart stops doesn't mean you're dead immediately. Right. The heart just circulates blood through the body. But stopping it does cut oxygen supply to the brain. You'll be dead soon after. Which is why we have CPR. Let's say your heart does stop. If someone performs CPR before your brain cells die, you can recover. In co-ops, when the life gauge drops to zero, it means you're in a near-death state. You won't be able to move or anything else. Performing CPR on near-death teammates can bring them back into action. Of course, performing CPR in the middle of battle isn't exactly safe. You're leaving yourself exposed. Even so, in co-ops, you and your teammates are all in the same boat. Don't think you can get away with leaving one of them behind. I wouldn't think of it. And I'd expect them to do the same for me. If you let all your teammates die during a mission, there'll be nobody left to save you. And then, it's game over. Exactly, and nobody wants game over. Let's learn about some camaraderie. Building trust with your teammates is essential to success in co-ops. That goes without saying. I'm not gonna let somebody I can't trust cover my ass. The measure of that trust is called camaraderie. Think of it as an indicator of how strong your bond is with your co-op's teammates. The friendlier you act toward them, the greater your camaraderie. Give me an example. Your camaraderie will be higher if you're co-op in than standing apart. Saving a teammate's life with CPR also strengthens your bonds with them. Things like hitting a teammate with friendly fire will cause your camaraderie to go down. Hmm. Makes sense. Camaraderie carries over from mission to mission. The next time you go co-ops in with the same guy, you'll start off strong. But be careful. If you keep taking new people with you on missions, your camaraderie with past teammates eventually reverts back to its original level. Got it. I'll have to make sure to renew old friendships once in a while. The performance benefits gained from Snake Sync in co-ops depend on your camaraderie. It's always best to keep things cool with your teammates. Well, they tried to encourage playing this game with more than one person, that's for sure. What's on about syncing up your snake? Stand still when you're snake in, and you and your teammates will start to get in sync. In sync? That's right. Stay still together and you'll enter snake boy band. sync Duh. The synergy will give you a boost in performance. You'll move faster, recover faster, and have better camouflage. In other words, we're at our best when we're in the same groove. You got it. If you've got a big task ahead, can't hurt to take some time to get in sync. Like I said before, the benefits you get from Snake Sync depend on your camaraderie. I hear ya. It's a lot easier knowing you've got someone you know and trust covering your back. Lets you focus that much more on what you have to do. Yeah, and that ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Alright, heroism. Jeez, there's a lot of these. If camaraderie represents how much your teammates trust you, then heroism shows how high your reputation is. Heroism? That's right, heroism. Your reputation affects your ability to recruit new members to MSF. With higher heroism, it won't take as long to convince guys to join our cause and send them back by Fulton Recovery. Ugh, so, how do I get this heroism thing to go up? Lots of ways. Complete tough missions, avoid unnecessary bloodshed, and don't get caught by the enemy like a deer in headlights, or you'll never be heroic. Also, getting out there and attacking the enemy in co-ops will boost your reputation among your teammates. Of course, it'll get the enemy gunning right for you, too. But don't sweat it. Be yourself. Be the boss. From where I'm standing, you're plenty heroic already. Knock it off. <laughs> Basically, if you suck at this game, you can't be a hero is what I got out of that. <laughs>
Seems the R&D team's been busy working on co-ops only weapons. Co-ops only? Like a gun with extreme firepower, but only when two people fire it at once. I hear it's still in the concept stage. Uh, I know some rocket launchers need two people to operate, but a co-ops only weapon... Hey, if they come up with something good, you'll have that much more reason to go co-ops. Why don't you check in and see how they're doing every once in a while? I'll think about it. Don't fucking tell me what to do. What about the comms? In co-ops, maintaining close communications with your teammates is crucial. Absolutely. Losing track of each other on the battlefield is a good way for a unit to get itself wiped out. Enemy positions, orders, distress calls. When communications break down, you get picked off one by one. Now about co-ops comms. Co-ops comms? It's a radio system for communicating with co-ops teammates. First press the start button to open the menu. Then select co-ops comms. After that, press one button to choose a category, then another button to select the actual message. So basically, you use different combinations of two buttons to send different messages. Well, easy enough. You can set which messages go with which buttons during mission prep. Uh, sounds like it's gonna be a pain to send messages until I get used to it. Then why don't you assign co-ops comms to the select button? That should make things a little quicker and easier. Just go to select button under options. I'll give it a try. Can't you just like use a headset? Battle cries and the Kotodama effect. God, aren't we done with this co-op shit? Jesus. Snake, you familiar with the Japanese word Kotodama? Mm hmm. Kotodama. Unfortunately, there's no direct equivalent in English. But to keep it simple, let's call it a sort of battle cry. Battle cry, huh? Right. But Kotodama is actually a deep Japanese concept. Koto means word, and Dama means spirit. It signifies that words have power that affect our reality. <laughs> uh, are you feeling okay? I guess I made it sound kind of like mumbo-jumbo, huh? <laughs> Seriously, though, haven't you ever felt energized when a teammate cheered you on? Or the other way around? Ever had your legs cut out from under you by a thoughtless remark? Yeah, I know the feeling. Words can have a powerful mental effect on people. Same goes for co-ops comps. Offering praise to somebody could make them run faster than usual. Or make somebody who thinks they're done for get up and fight again. See what I'm saying? I get the picture. So it works in reverse, too. The powers of words are many and varied. Try using them for yourself. Huh. Well, that was a strange conversation. I understand the concept of what he's talking about, but that's, like, super strange to... Like, is it just, like, a nice way of saying... Oh, when you're talking to your friend and playing co-ops, make sure you encourage them and don't talk shit on them. Is that what that really meant? I don't know. Anyway, let's learn about special items like the cardboard box. Snake, about cardboard boxes. <laughs> it feels kind of weird now you're speaking my language to you. But there have been a few recent developments in cardboard box technology. So just to be safe, here goes. Go on. You can do much more with a box than just hide under it. Oh, do you tell. You can put it someplace and leave it there. Huh? You can get on top of it and use it to reach high places, or hide from the enemy in its shadow. Mm. I like what I'm hearing so far. And that's not all. You can even put items in it and send them to co-op's teammates. Really? I never thought of any of that. Damn. Is there anything a cardboard box can't do? Every soldier should have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, don't get too excited. This isn't exactly what they were made for. Which reminds me, don't you think the boxes around here are a little on the mm, big side? You're right. I bet two people could fit under one box, if they packed in tight enough. They call them love boxes. Love boxes? Of course, you don't need a love box to fit two people inside. Any box of similar size will do. Well, isn't that fancy? One thing about this... <laughs> two men in a box uh, I was just gonna say I didn't realize you could you could set the box down and climb it to get to higher higher ledges which might be really useful on some of these missions if I can actually do that that'd be awesome anyway let's learn about the two men in a box up to two people can fit inside a cardboard box tell me how move close to a box with a teammate inside and an icon will appear then press the action button you'll stay inside as long as the action button is pressed so, same as snake formation, huh? Exactly the same. In fact, when you put on a cardboard box when snake in, 
both of you can climb inside. Ah, a box big enough to hold me and my buddy. These are fine times we live in, hey, Kaz? Yeah, sure, boss. <laughs> don't act like you don't want to be in a, stuck in a cardboard box with Snake, son. Let's learn about this Walkman. Walkman. Snake, about that cassette player Galvez was carrying. What about it? That was no Russian imitation. It was the real deal. A prototype developed by a Japanese company. Sony? Get out of here. It's true. It had the Sony logo on it. The product name is Walkman. Walkman. It's Walk a revolutionary Mando. new concept. Music you can listen to on the go. You can take it with you when you leave the house. I gave it a listen, and you wouldn't believe how good the sound quality is for something so tiny. And in stereo, too. Think of the technology that must have gone into it. And that tape is equally amazing. The treble range is clearly superior to any other cassette ever made. Stylish, too. How Galvez get his hands on a model that's not even out yet? Beats me. It's not the kind of thing I'd expect some stodgy Soviet to be into. Mm, me neither. Tell you what, though, it's a fine piece of work. It'll let me listen to my music when I want, where I want. I never thought I'd hear you say that. But I have to agree. Me? I'm a recording freak. And I always used to laugh at the idea of a portable player. But now that I've seen it in action, I've changed my mind. Being able to take your music with you. This could be the start of a revolution in music. Could be. I'm having the guys at Mother Base study and analyze it. Who knows? They might be able to come up with something even better. Like, like... Like a, like a CD player. Oh, don't even speak blasphemy. No such thing as a CD player. What's a CD? They don't even know what a CD is at this point. All right. Enemy soldier types. So what about the CIA mercs? Amanda and her crew tell me they've managed to identify several different categories of mercenaries employed by the CIA. Give me a rundown. Sounds like info I could use. No problem. I'll go through them in order. He's going to go through them in order. All right. Patrolmen and guards. The type of enemy you'll be seeing most is the type that patrols and guards a specific operational area. For the sake of convenience, Amanda's crew calls the outdoor ones patrolmen and the indoor ones guards. They might look like they're just out for a stroll, but don't be fooled. They're sharper than they look. All of their senses are finely honed. Normally, they'll patrol along fixed routes, but when the alert level is raised, They'll assume a more efficient alert posture and focus on defending specific points. That's bad for you. Obviously, they can hold their own in combat. And with body armor, it'll be even harder to take them down. If they're wearing a bulletproof helmet, you can forget about one-shot kills. Just a heads up. You'll need to be smart about using camo and pick your routes. The most important thing is to avoid detection. I've been doing a good job against those fools already. Even if they have a helmet, I've just been CQC and bitches. Anyway, we've already hit up some of these on the few missions that I've been doing, but we haven't learned about sentries yet. There are areas out there where enemy soldiers are deployed in multiple layers for extra coverage. More than a few of those will be attacking you from a distance, rooftops and far off vantage points. Try not to get too distracted by nearby enemies, because you could be leaving yourself wide open to longer range attacks. I'll be careful. I understand what sentries are. You didn't really have to tell me that, sir. Let's learn about soldier level. We know there are variations in the kinds of gear patrolmen and commandos wear, especially the body armor. Our scouts report that an enemy's defense and firing accuracy are directly proportional to how heavy their gear is. Hmm. Those must be the guys with the highest combat skills. They can fight in heavier gear without their performance suffering. Supposedly, it's pretty easy to tell the difference in gear just by looking. So remember, use extra caution when dealing with enemies wearing heavy gear. I think we've already pretty much learned that. That's nothing new to us. All right, so that does it for the soldier types because we've already learned about the other half of them. Last but not least, the battle range. Differences in between, in range between different weapons. Oh, that's psh, this should enemies be self-explanatory too. Enemies will try to fight too. you from different distances based on the weapon they've got equipped. When you meet an enemy. Get a good look at what they're carrying. It can make or break your chances in battle. Close range, shotgun. Long range, ugh, really? We're gonna, ugh, let's just go through them, Jesus Christ. Enemies carrying handguns and shotguns will try and get in Durr. close. That makes them dangerous, but at the same time, easier to hit.
Keep your wits about you, and you can turn a threat into an opportunity. An opportunity. I can do that. Enemies carrying assault rifles and machine guns will usually fire at you from farther away. Use whatever cover you can find, then return fire with a few well-placed shots of your own. Uh-huh, now long range. Oh, 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 oh. Enemies... I already listened to that one, sorry. Long range. Don't expect enemies carrying sniper rifles or rocket launchers to get up close and personal. They'll be constantly moving from place to place looking for an opening to snipe at you. Tricky bastards. Those eye for an eye, tooth for a bastards. tooth. Go with the sniper rifle. Make sure you stay out of their line of sight, and when they expose themselves, take them down. Pop those fools' domes off, son! Alright, are we finally done with Kaz's freaking... Oh god, enough freaking briefing files from Kaz until the next ones pop up. Anyways, there were some new ones that popped up under uh, Paws and Amanda. And also, actually Chico had one too, so let's see if we can get to those as well. Snake. To the north of the village is a bridge that crosses a hydraulic pipe. Though normally the bridge is not used by people, if you slip, you will fall straight to the bottom of the valley. Be careful. What's a channel doing here? It is not for irrigation. They are hydroelectric pipes. I wonder if they run into Irasu's crater lake. Normally they would build a reservoir at the bottom of the valley, but it was probably too dangerous. Los Cantos means sword peak. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Ridge. You should be able to see across the Irazu mountain range from there. There are not as many big trees at that elevation, and you'll probably be well above the mist. Uh, it'll be tough to hide up there. You're not thinking about the scenery right now, are you? Not while I'm surrounded by bad guys. You should have seen it when the country was at peace. I know you would have been impressed. Well... That'll be our reward for a successful mission. Sound good? Wonderful. Thank you, Snake. Yeah, we'll go on a tour and ex admire the mountain range. What do you say? Fuerte la ladera. There is an old fort around there. What is it, boss? You sound upset. Well, you see, it was built during the Civil War. Let me guess. Disputes between Costa Rica's political parties escalated into all-out conflict. See, si. conflict that cost my grandparents their lives. The most senseless sort of war. Countrymen mindlessly slaughtering their own. That fort is a reminder of that senselessness. Mm. Sadly ironic, given who's occupying it now. That war was the reason Costa Rica abolished the army. Please, Nick, get them out of our country. I intend to. That's the plan, baby. That's the plan. We're going to whoop some ass, take some names, and kick them out of your country. All right. So, Amanda's got a new one about herself. Apparently, it's about her role at Mother Base. You have taken such good care of me since you saved me from El Colibri. I want to return the favor. Just oh. wait until you're healed up. Then we'll she talk. She wants to return the favor if you know what that, I'm saying. But you need all the help you can get. It might take a while for me to heal completely, but I'll be fine once I'm on my feet. Put me in a combat unit. I'll pull my weight. I wouldn't expect any less from a Sandinista Commandante. <sighs> Enough flattery. But seriously, it does not feel right for me to be sitting here while my compas are out risking their lives. One thing's for sure. Having you out in the field would be a big boost to Sandinista morale. Of course, our ultimate goal is still the overthrow of Samosa. But until we get ourselves back in order, we will follow your lead, wherever it takes us. Glad to have you on board. Loyal soldiers are hard to come by sometimes. All right, last but not least, we should have some stuff about Chico, where he was talking about those crazy monsters from around the world. So let's learn about the Loch Ness monster. Did you ever hear of the Loch Ness monster? Of now course. That one I know. Pretty much everyone's heard of old Nessie. Great. So I don't have to explain. I think she's a long lost dinosaur. Don't you? Um, sure. Why not? One of the compas gave me a book about it, with photos. It looks exactly like the plesiosaur. Then why does it only live in Loch Ness? Well, it probably got cut off from the ocean. Back when Loch Ness was part of the ocean, some plesiosaurs became trapped there when the climate changed. There weren't any mammals there, so no natural predators. Today's Nessie is descended from those plesiosaurs. Then 
Wouldn't it make sense for there to be monsters in other lakes with similar climates? Exactly. That's why there's been giant monster sightings in a bunch of other places. Like Nahuelito and Ogopogo. I don't know if there's one in Irasu too, but I know there's definitely something living in Lago Cosipolca. Is that right? Well, let's learn some more about those things, like Nahuelito. You mentioned the Nahuelito. What is it? It's a plesiosaur that lives in Lago Nahuel Huapi in Argentina. It's described a little differently, but I'm sure it's basically the same creature as Nessie. Except for one thing. What? Well, according to one theory, it's the result of a nuclear test back in the 50s. What? There's no record of a nuclear test in Argentina in the 50s. At the time, the president, General Juan Perón, was pushing hard to industrialize the country. I wouldn't be surprised if he conducted a top-secret nuclear test before he was overthrown in a coup. Mm, sounds a little far-fetched to me. You think? Then maybe Nahuelito really is a dinosaur. No, I, I didn't say that... I mean, it's really pretty obvious. Wait a minute. Thanks for clearing that up, boss. <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> Fucking dinosaurs. That's what he was meant to say. What about the Ogopogo? And what kind of name is that anyway? Ogopogo is a monster that lives in Okanagan Lake in Canada. I guess it's an Indian name because it's a legend passed down by the Indians. Uh, a legend, huh? Well, then it's probably not. There's written records of it too. The first one was in 1872, and there's been more sightings since the start of the 20th century. Uh -huh. You starting to get into UMA's two snake? Yeah, maybe. UMA hunting. Now that's a real manned adventure. What do you say, Snake? After Nicaragua's at peace again? You want to go exploring together? Well, we'll see. Might not be such a bad life. It might be ever so slightly less dangerous than the current life that we lead. Anyway, Mokole Mbembe. It sounds like something from Africa. Mokele Mbembe lives in the Congo River. There's nothing mysterious about it, though. It's already been confirmed as a real living dinosaur. The local people know all about it. And when they were shown a drawing of a brontosaurus, every one of them said it was Mokele Mumbembe. Hmm. When peace returns to Nicaragua, I want to go to the Congo myself. Oh, the revolutionary movement in the Congo ended in failure, you know. Yeah, I know. I wish we could do something to help, but Africa's awfully far away. Africa. I wonder if El Che ever saw Mokele Mumbembe. I wonder if I will. Well. Oh. Best to take care of business here before daydreaming about Africa. Yeah, I guess you're right. Exactly. Take care of with the business at home before you worry about business elsewhere. Nah, I mean, nah, I'm saying, nah, what I'm talking about. All right, we are caught up on all the briefing files except for these data files down here. I'm gonna check these out, or at least this one that I have here on a different episode because I think this episode's long enough. In the next episode of Let's Play Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, we're going to fight the Poopa, which is that Shagohod looking motherfucking machine. So I'm excited for that. We'll see how it goes. I'll switch up my gear and everything and uh, continue on with the story. Now that we're all caught up with the briefing files, this will be our last briefing file heavy episode as far as I can, am concerned. We may have some more briefing files piling up on us as we go but I'm going to try to knock them out as we go so we don't have so many at once so like I said see you guys next time peace